Clowns. Some love them. Lots hate them. But in the UK, it's a serious business. <coughs> oh, sorry. Just sneezed my nose off. It's, it's a responsibility. It is for fun as well to do, of course. That's Debbie. My name is Debbie, and I'm the clown egg artist. She's in charge of the clown egg registry, a collection of every single clown's face in all of the United Kingdom. The tradition of the painting of the eggs was started, first of all, as a hobby by Stan Bolt. It then became a way of, of recording and copywriting a clown's face, because every clown's face is different. Various different artists then became the, the egg artists, and I took over six years ago. Debbie's job is to paint onto an egg the unique makeup of each clown. It's nice to have a physical object that looks like that character. It's so totally different to having a photograph. The Clown Egg Registry is a collection of dozens of eggs that serves as an official list of each individual clown's personality and look. When um, the order comes through for an egg, the clown will send his application form along with some samples of material and send photographs of himself, different angles. Um, I start by sketching the, the portrait onto the egg and then gradually add colour with the paint. So sometimes it's actual hair, that I would, like wool, that I will make into hair to put on. So it depends on the character, but they're all there to make you laugh. Can you pose again, please? It's a responsibility because it's, it is very important to carry on that tradition. Faces are the most important subject matter in art. It's a never-ending source of material. When you put on one of my masks, you become somebody different. You start to embody that character and have a lot of fun with it. My name's Landon Meyer, and I make disturbingly realistic masks. I never thought I was gonna make a living doing masks. I was a picture framer, loan officer, pizza delivery driver, and then I got laid off. I've always been interested in doing something that's like really surreal and nightmarish. So it was more or less an experiment that took off. I am the only person out there that's doing hyper-realistic likeness masks. I'm kind of this weird mad scientist down in the basement. I start off getting lots of reference material. The hardest part is doing the sculpture. That can take anywhere from four days to a year. But once the sculpt is done and I have a mold, it's about a one-week process to make a mask. They are ungodly expensive. They range $500 and up, and sometimes even high as $7,500. Over the years, I've made approximately 25 different designs, and I've produced with my own hands over a thousand masks. What I make, I like to consider wearable art. These are super realistic sculptures you can put over your head and wear. People just seem to have this astonished reaction to the masks. That's what I love about them. Isto é um trabalho que é feito por gosto. E às vezes eles são um bocadinho não não são tão simples de arranjar como possam possa parecer. Bem-vindos ao Hospital de Bonecas. Eu sou a clínica geral deste hospital já há cerca de 30 anos. Nós somos um hospital onde se tratam só bonecos, não pessoas. O 
hospital já está na família há cinco gerações. Ele começou em 1830 e até hoje temos continuado. Quando as bonecas entram, nós lá embaixo na loja fazemos o diagnóstico, tal qual como no hospital a sério, e preenchemos uma ficha. Uh, depois uh, vamos vendo o que é que elas precisam. Temos a sala da cirurgia plástica. Também temos uma morgue. Aqui estão os nossos doadores de órgãos. Usamos muitas coisas mesmo de cirurgia a sério. Usamos pinças, usamos bisturis. Os olhos. Talvez seja o... a doença mais frequente com que elas vêm. É talvez das coisas mais divertidas para as crianças se estragarem, porque é só empurrar e os olhos caem. Todo o ano nós temos muitas imagens religiosas, mas a grande maioria é Menino Jesus. Ou para vestir ou para restaurar, há sempre muitos. Quando eles já estão prontos, vão esperar que os venham buscar. Não é o hospital que é importante, são as pessoas que vêm cá ter connosco que o fazem importante. Porque nós nos curamos as saudades, as memórias. Quando entregamos as bonecas, muitas vezes as pessoas deitam uma lágrima de prazer, de, de saudades, de tempo de criança e ficam bastante emocionados. Elas tomam muito mais conta de nós quase do que nós tomamos conta delas. People ask me this, you know, for my day job, isn't what you do tedious? As a stop motion animator, you're very conscious of time and of incrementally moving a three-dimensional object bit by bit by bit. Mad God is a stop motion film that I've been kind of making for like the last 30 years. There's nothing stopping me from continuing doing it, you know, forever. When I was five years old in 1955, I saw King Kong on television. As a stupid kid, I was just enthralled by Hollywood monsters. And that was really the thing that kind of kindled my appetite. Subsequently over the years, I have worn many hats in the motion picture racket. I've been involved with Star Wars, the RoboCop series, Jurassic Park, Starship Troopers, on and on. One of the things that gives me a lot of pleasure is, is to make something, but the day job has certain requirements to it. Over the years, those requirements have become a lot more limiting. The Mad God Project allowed me to just make this more pure thing that was kind of a form of therapy for me as an antidote to my day job. It's a combination of live action and stop motion miniature sets in layers like a collage. For lack of a better term, it's a passion project. And things keep getting deeper and darker and odder. There are imaginary cities that are built out of iron ingots. There's like strange jungles that you go through. There's this huge dystopic, post-industrial, nightmare city. And it just goes on and on and on. I mean, practically anything that I can think of. Inherent in it, there's a um, level of surprise that I, I think, you know, for me is a very childlike kind of a thing. I shoot here at my studio in Berkeley. It's stocked with all kinds of stuff for all kinds of different electronic projects, woodworking projects, lights, cameras. So it's a huge toy box. All of the characters in Mad God are built by me. The process begins with the articulated skeleton, and that's made by ball and socket or hinge joints that allow you to move the characters incrementally, one frame at a time. And then I just wrap lengths of polyurethane foam and build up the general mass. From there, I will take latex skins, adhere them with rubber cement, paint the thing, and then it's ready to shoot. When you're actually shooting a stop-motion scene, you project into the character. And sometimes it can get very complicated. 
You are always gauging acceleration and deceleration, weight and mass, and then that kind of leads to, but you know what, what would make it better? For me, this whole process is more of a compulsion. I really have no say over it. It's just something that I, I, I have to do. You know, I've been doing it so long, it's, I, I breathe, I live and breathe in this world. It's all I think about.